Hey, welcome back everybody. This is going to be part one of the LS engine build. Um, before we get started and tear into this motor, I've, I've, I want to address uh, some things that have come up. Uh, there's some real big misconceptions out there about the LS engines. Um, and so I want to kind of address that. So there's a lot of guys out there that, you know, they're really, you know, they'll say, well, I'm old school. And, and that's fine, because I'm old school too. Uh, but they will, what they'll do is, they, they look at the, the new stuff out there, the LS motors, and they, they just kind of, I don't know, they shrug their shoulders or, or you know, there, there's that element of, of, you know, car guys out there that just, they refuse to give up the old small block Chevys and big block Chevys. And, and you know, don't get me wrong, because I'm, I'm a guy, I, I love the old small blocks and big blocks, and I'll probably never stop building them. But uh, you, 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 I get comments, and I've had quite a few comments about, well, you know, the LS motors are aluminum and they're terrible. If you overheat them once, they're done. And, and just this kind of thinking that, that the, the LS platform is somehow weak or just doesn't really, you know, or, or, or the other thing I get is, oh, they're really expensive to build. Well, the reality is, is that neither one of those two things are true. Um, the, the, the great thing about the LS motors, the LS platform, is that number one, they're cheap, they're reliable, and they make ridiculous power. Um, the, the, the lower block design of the LS engines is, is far and away stronger than the, the earlier style uh, small block Chevys, and I would even venture to say probably stronger than the big blocks, the, the older cast iron big blocks. And so um, the design of the block, it's a skirted block. Uh, they all come with cross bolted mains. So basically it's a six bolt main cap uh, from the factory. You know, and we've, I've had some other videos where I, I talked about that, but um, these, are, these are kind of misconceptions about the motor. The, the, the thing about the LS based engines is what, what GM did is they actually, they built a motor that really kind of solved all of the problems of the earlier versions of the V8 that they had. Um, they have a skirted block, which makes it just, they, it, you know, they have a, an aluminum block that's skirted, which helps, you know, strengthen the aluminum, makes, makes, makes their aluminum LS1 block and um, like the 6.2 that they've got and so forth. Those blocks are every bit as strong as um, probably much stronger than a big block Chevy cast iron block. I mean, they're super strong. Um, the thing about aluminum is it is susceptible to, you know, warping and distorting. If you get it really hot, you just got to have a good cooling system. And, and, you know, the flip side to that is that aluminum engines are going to cool way better than a cast iron motor. They're they have two thirds more heat dissipation. So, one of the things that we've kind of noticed about, you know, like like most street cars, street rods that we build uh, with any kind of boost or compression, they, they usually run, you know, they're on the verge of overheating all the time. You got to have like a massive cooling system for these things. The the aluminum LS based engines. One thing that I personally have noticed is that you'll see a like a 30 degree temperature differential. They run like 20, 30 degrees cooler than the cast iron, you know, the earlier cast iron blocks. Whereas, you know, you, you build a real hot dog, uh, small block, early cast iron small block, and you know, sometimes it's, you're on the verge of overheating like half the time, you know, if you're in traffic or whatever. That problem's kind of been solved with the aluminum engines. You don't, we really don't see a lot of overheating problems. You know, I mean, it's, it's possible to, have some kind of a cooling system failure like a water pump or something and, and you know you can overheat them but the fact that they dissipate heat so well really kind of negates the argument of, well you know if you get them hot you're going to destroy the engine which is true but they really don't get hot um, because they they move the heat out of the motor so well so much better than a cast iron motor um, 
And then, of course, a lot of the LSs, like the one we're going to do, is a cast iron block. So the this is actually a 5.3 liter that we're going to do. We're going to start our build with that one. But the nice thing about the 5.3 block is you can, you know, it's just a really beefy, burly block. You know, you can put all kinds of boost into these things. And if you if you do reliability mods, like a rotating assembly that's forged or whatever, you know, you can really, you can really, uh, you know, boost these things, put the screws to them, and they live. That that's the that's really the one of the benefits to these these engines. And so the the LS uh, the five three, you can bore the cylinders a bunch. You can bore them to a five seven. You can even bore them out to a six zero uh, bore size. In fact, the block the five three and the six zero and the block is very similar. Um, one of the problems that we had in earlier years, years ago, uh, is that you know you wanted to bore one of these five threes. There wasn't really a lot of pistons and components available. But now the aftermarket has really come on board with a lot of. I mean, there's so much aftermarket stuff for these things; it's ridiculous. Uh, so the, the LS-based engines are they're reliable. They're cheap. There, uh, and, and really the key to an LS is power. In addition to the architecture of the block being strong, is the cylinder heads. Um, they, they really got the cylinder heads ironed out. They've got the cathedral ports, and then the, like the LS3 has the large square ports. Um, but it's just a really tall port. Well, if you know anything about airflow, you know that the, the, the higher the intake runner, or the higher the intake port, the more velocity the air has going into the motor. The other thing is, is they really ironed out the, the in, induction system on these things. The, the, the factory intake manifold is plastic on a lot of these, but it flows just a phenomenal amount. You know, some of these these, these heads are flowing uh, numbers on the flow bench that you know just 10, 15 years ago, the average street guy with if you had a set of factory heads, you know, you 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 wouldn't even think that these kind of flow numbers were even possible. Well, with the LS platform, we got a really tall runner, and we got uh, an intake that's putting air basically straight in there. It's not turning a sharp corner, it's going straight in. It's, it's pointing right at the intake valve at basically a 45 degree angle, and it has this huge port. And really, a, a, an engine is just an air pump, and so the you know, the, the LS heads are, it's really the key uh, to, to the power of these engines. So, and of course it has a, a larger cam. The cam has a much bigger, bigger base on it. So if you have a larger base on the cam, you can have a much more aggressive cam profile, but it's more gentle. So whereas the small, like the old small block Chevy cams that have real small cam profile, cam diameter. Yeah, you could have a really aggressive cam, but it was just so aggressive that the cam would just beat the valve train to death, you know, because it's slamming it open and slamming it closed. With a bigger LS cam, a roller cam, we have a we can have a really aggressive profile, but it's a lot more gentle because it has more time, right? It's not slamming open and slamming closed. And so it's just a we can have really super aggressive uh, cam profiles on the LS, and it's real. It's actually very gentle on the valve train. It doesn't beat the valve train to death. So th these are these are some things that GM did, um, and, and you know the other manufacturers are doing good stuff too. Ford, the Ford Coyote motor, has a lot of the same characteristics that we're talking about here. I mean, it's just a really good design. They decided to go with overhead cams, which is probably even a little better than an in-block cam, but the, the drawback to, say, if you wanted to build a Coyote motor is, is the cost. Um, yes, they can make just as much or more power as an LS platform, but they're just so much more expensive. So the average guy out there, you know, it's like kind of unattainable. Chrysler, the same thing with the Hemi platform. The Hemis are phenomenal. They, they have a lot of the same characteristics as the LS and the Coyote. Uh, very similar design, very similar performance characteristics, but again, money. So 
This is why you know I kind of chose to do one of these. These are really popular. Um, so if you want, uh, if you want good, cheap horsepower, reliable horsepower, uh, LS platform. There's there's a couple companies out there that are building. Um, you know, and what this is this is what we've come to now. You know, 15, 20 years ago, if you told somebody, hey, you know, I'm going to build a I want to build a street car that's got 2,000 horsepower, right? You know, their response would be, yeah, but, you know, when you say street car, I mean, is it drivable? Is it, you know, is it going to run hot? You know, how, how realistic is it to drive it on the street? Well, you know, years ago, it wasn't very realistic. There was guys building cars like that. Not too many, but it wasn't really realistic to make, to call that a street car. Well, nowadays with the, the LS platform and, and you know, twin turbochargers, um, there's companies out there that are building street cars that are tame, they're, they're mild, they're, you know, you got a 400 plus horsepower car, daily driver that you drive to work every day. It idles good, it doesn't get hot, it's, it's very, very drivable. I mean, your mom could get in it and drive it to the store. Um, you get into boost on something like that and you're making 2,000 horsepower. So there, there's companies, um, Nelson Racing Engine out of California is, is really on the cutting edge of doing this. And so this is what's going on in, in the world. So, you know, you guys that are really like sticking to your guns on the older small blocks and stuff, yeah, you, you know, um, they're, they're not better. <laughs> The, the, the newer, the LS platform is much better. It's just, it's stronger, it's better, it, it, it's more efficient, um, you know, gets way better mileage, and they're cheap. They're not, you know, I'm not saying it's cheap to build a 2,000 horsepower twin turbo daily driver, okay? I'm not saying that's cheap, but you want, you know, three, 400 horsepower. A buddy of mine built a uh, 5.3 like this, and he didn't even bore it over and make it a 5.7 or a 6.0 or anything. He just built a 5.3. He researched the exact cam he wanted. He put, uh, he bumped up the compression a little bit and he did a little bit of porting on the heads. We dynoed that car and then, believe it or not, he put it in a Fox body Mustang, which is kind of weird. Pissed all the Ford guys off, but whatever. It was his wife's car. The thing's making, you know, 430 horsepower at the wheels on the dyno. You know, he, he's got, you know, less than four grand into that whole motor, the whole build. Um, the other thing is that that's really uh, just leaps and bounds ahead of the older blocks. You know, don't I don't want you guys to get me wrong. I'm my my channel's vintage iron. I'm never going to stop building the old cast iron stuff. I like that stuff. It's cool. It's nostalgic. You know, I'm I'm into it. But uh, you know, you you don't really want to turn your back on the new stuff just because you don't understand it or you're afraid of it. You don't want to be afraid of these. These engines, if you've ever built an LS, everybody that's built one knows that what I'm going to tell you right now is true. These engines are simple to build. These are like, when we go through and we build this thing, you are not going to believe how easy these are to build. It just, there's, there's nothing to it. And that's, that's another part of the appeal of this motor. GM made this thing so simple. Uh, it just, it's, it's a really basic motor that just has really great architecture and some killer heads that that's I mean they they, they really got a winner when they designed this thing and and I don't I'm not sure who the engineers were on this but the engineers that built this motor they were thinking they, they really did plan very well and their goal was to make a high performance V8 engine and Mission accomplished. So I give kudos to those engineers that designed this thing because they did a great job. The the so I was going to say um, the thing about the LS that's just leaps and bounds out of the old cast iron blocks, and even even the, the the cast iron LSs, is the cylinders are really really hard. They do like a nickel seal type coating. Um, the 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 LS one liners that they use in there. They, you know, the, the old cast iron Chevy blocks, you know, you get one with 130, 140,000 miles on it, and you got a ring ridge on top of the cylinder, right? 
that that's you know it's huge you can grab it with your fingernail you got a big old ledge there because the rings have worn out the bore so bad and of course you know we're gonna you can bore them and repair all that but the, the LS engines what I see a lot on these is you'll get an old core like I haven't taken this one apart but I've got a core sitting on the floor here and I know for a fact that this this motor that's sitting on the floor um, which is it's a 5.3 also it's got uh, nearly 200,000 miles on it and it has no ring ridge there's virtually no wear on these cylinders and so that's another thing that they have really uh, kind of stepped up with on the LS motors is they have a really hard uh, cylinder uh, very hard wearing material in fact it's it's actually a lot harder to bore and hone these things because the, the cylinders have such good uh, uh, you know they're they, they're so hard uh, they have the aluminum blocks that they have a nicocele coating that just is amazingly uh, wear resistant and so it, it it's this is why a lot of guys that, that know this they're not afraid to go to a wrecking yard and buy a used LS with 140,000 on it you know freshen it up put some rings and bearings in it slam it in their car and, and they got change the cam do a little head work and, and for, for very little money you got a killer street motor that's in great shape and it's gonna last for a long time because the cylinders and I've taken a lot of these apart I I don't think I've ever seen an LS motor with a big ring ridge in, in all the years I've been doing these and taking them apart so they just don't wear out like the old motors do um, so there's really no I mean there really is no downside to an LS motor if you're going to compare it to an early small block there's no downside to these motors there's 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 nothing about the LS motor the LS platform that you know a guy would look at and go yeah but eh, you know what about this I there's nothing about it that you can you can really use that argument and you know the guys that do say that kind of stuff about the LS's they've, they've never really I would venture to say that they've never really experienced an LS they've never really gone to the time and the trouble to, to build one and actually run it or, or even better yet uh, pull it out of the boneyard so we're gonna run this thing um, and we're gonna use a factory intake on it and we're gonna use the my, uh, I'm gonna have a buddy of mine help me set up the computer. There's a couple wiring deals you gotta do with it, and that's a little bit out of my wheelhouse. Uh, he's really good at it, so he's gonna help me out when we get this thing set up. Uh, but we wanna run this thing, you know? Um, we have an LS1 on our dyno that we make, it's just a dyno mule. That is a wrecking yard motor. It's been on that dyno for, I don't know, two and a half years, I think. And we just make pull after pull after pull after pull on that thing. And that thing just keeps running. It's consistent. We change intakes. We change headers. We do all kinds of stuff with it, you know, to test the intakes and the exhaust systems and stuff. And, and that thing is consistently, you know, 475, 480 horsepower. And, and that was a motor that came out of a wrecked truck a couple of years ago. You know, it was all dirty and greasy and everything. We did very little. We did cam change and a couple other little things to it, uh, rings and bearings and stuff. But other than that, I mean, that motor. So realistically, I mean, if you wanted to do a swap, um, you know, uh, the, the, you know, you see these motors on, these engines on Craigslist or eBay or whatever, you know, LS1 pull out, you know, with 80,000 miles and, you know, they want 2,500 bucks for it. Well, it seems expensive on the outside, but actually 2500 bucks for one of those with that kind of mileage, if you get the computer and the harness, that's a bargain, man, because you've got a motor that is a running son of a gun. I, I, hopefully this sheds a little light on this subject. Um, I'm a real big fan of the LS platform. I, I haven't, I've kind of stayed away in the past from doing a video series on these uh, just because when I set up my channel, I kind of wanted to gear this thing around vintage motors. That was my thing, my vintage iron. And I, and I really wanted to, you know, because there's a zillion guys out there doing LS motors. Um, and I, I kind of wanted to stay unique. You know, we got this old vintage iron stuff here, but, and I've done a lot of LSs, I just didn't do them on camera, you know. 
but there's so much demand for these now. Um, and you know, I I picked this core up for 200 bucks. This was on Craigslist. This this was a runny engine. Just had uh, it had a dead cylinder, low compression or something. But this thing has I don't know a bajillion miles on it. It's still running. The guy just it was down on power and it had one cylinder that was low compression or whatever. It might have you know bad valve or something. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll take it apart. But 200 bucks. Um, the motor that I got sitting on the floor here. This is also a cast iron LS motor. Uh, the, um, I got this free. I mean, the guy just gave it to me. He 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 bought this for the crank and the rods. He was a buddy of mine, and he said, "Hey, you want this five free block and heads?" Uh, yeah. He put the. He's got a sand rail that he used the, the crank for, and so uh, you may not get it free, but you can certainly get it cheap. Um, especially if you go with the cast iron 5.3. Now the aluminum blocks, the, the 6.2, and the, uh, you know, the LS1, the 5.7 aluminum block, a little more expensive, uh, pricey, and if you want to go with aluminum, but, you know, for the street, I'll tell you, these, these cast iron blocks, they're a dime a dozen, and they are just brutally strong. Uh, you, you could make easily the lower end of this motor, uh, you know, six, 700 horsepower put a little boost into it, put some nitrous on it or whatever. You put a good crank and rods in there, uh, they can handle it. And, and there's the other thing is, uh, you probably won't get that kind of horsepower with the 5.3 heads. If you port them, 450 to 485 is no problem. And, and you don't need to do all that much porting. You, I've done a few of these, just gotta clean them up. The other thing is there's so many aftermarket heads available. I mean, there's ridiculously cheap heads for these things. Just look on the internet. You know, you can you, for for you know seven eight hundred bucks, you can buy a set of aftermarket aluminum LS heads that are flowing, just phenomenal. And that's really the key to power is the air. I mean, an engine is just an air pump, right? So these things, we get a ton of air into them. The lower end is super strong, and I'll tell you, man, you you got something. So. So I hope you're looking forward to this, and I hope that cleared some of the misconceptions up. Those of you guys out there that are old school, and you do, you really you're resistant to the LS engines, uh, you know, you're missing out because these engines are really phenomenal. Everything that was wrong with the old small block and big block Chevy has been corrected. They fixed all of it, and they did a damn good job. So, uh, all right, well, next we're going to get into this. I'm going to start tearing this down. I'm going to walk you through the tear down. You're going to be surprised how simple this thing is.